Although he was one of the most widely published and prolific composers of the 16th century, little is known about the life of Jacobus Clemens non Papa. He may have been born in modern Belgium or the Netherlands, sometime between 1510 and 1515, and his first definite documented appearance is in the late 1530s, when the Parisian publisher Pierre Attignon issued a collection of his secular songs. Records survive of short-lived spells of employment at the Cathedral of Saint Donation in Bruges from 1544 to 1545, and later at the illustrious Brotherhood of Our Blessed Lady in Sehertogenbosch in 1550. Besides this lack of biographical information, the other enduring mystery related to Clemens is his unusual nickname, for which there are several theories. He certainly wasn't the first composer to have earned an epithet. His French predecessor, Jean Mouton, was so called for being as meek and mild as a lamb. Nor was Clemens the first to be given a knowingly humorous name. Antoine Divitis, or Antoine le Riche, seems to have earned his after having to flee the city of Mechlin to escape from debt collectors. But Clemens' soubriquet seems to have garnered him a reputation nearly as well known as his music, certainly during his own lifetime. First used by the Antwerp music publisher and composer Tilman Susato, with whom Clemens had a long and fruitful relationship, it later appeared more emphatically as Nono Papa and Ode Papa, absolutely not the Pope, and may have been a serious attempt to distinguish him from either the poet Jacobus Papa or Pope Clement VII, or even an expression of the composer's own religious beliefs. More likely, though, is that it was an ironic comment on Clemens' distinctly unpious behaviour, despite his being an ordained priest. One contemporary described him as un grand ivrogne et très mal vivant, a great drunkard and lived very badly, in a rather damning job recommendation. This would certainly explain the disparity between his contemporary fame and his patchy employment history, and is perhaps backed up by the choice of texts for some of his nearly a hundred surviving secular songs, including the scandalous Entre vous filles de quinze ans. Besides these, Clemens' output includes 15 masses and as many magnificats, 159 Souter Liedekens, popular Dutch settings of the Psalms, and over 200 motets. Of these, the most famous is probably his Ego Flos Campi. This was likely written for the illustrious Brotherhood during his brief employment there, with the guild's motto, Sicut Lilium Inter Spinas, as a lily among thorns, a reference to the perpetual virginity of Mary, taking center stage at the motet's midpoint. Composed for seven voices, a number with strong Marian associations, Clemens highlights this central text by having it sung three times in a row. First by the three upper voices, then the four lower voices, then all seven voices together. With the rhythm slowed for this final repetition to exaggerate the effect of the simple chordal writing, a marked contrast with the complex polyphony of the opening and closing sections. A master of melody, Clemens uses this same technique of dividing the seven voices into smaller groupings elsewhere in the motet, with his counterpoint always subservient to the beauty of the individual lines and the harmony they create. Also a consummate recycler, he makes efficient use of his musical material through judicious repetition as at Sica mica mea inter filias, fons ortorum, where the repeated phrases lend the music a cyclical, wave-like quality, which evokes the natural springs of the text. Also repeated are the fluid lines of the final section describing the water flowing down from Lebanon, where, in a technique used by other composers, including Palestrina and Victoria, he repeats the music exactly, but with the equal voices, the soprano and tenor parts, exchanged. Far from being musical padding, 
This device, also to be found in that English Renaissance gem, Parsons Ave Maria, allows Clemens to play against the listener's familiarity with the repeated music, with the second time ending with an even more climactic decorated cadence, leading into the coda of the final few bars, where having already reached the home key, the music unwinds by alternating between it and what we would call the subdominant, gradually bringing the harmonic movement and the motet as a whole to rest with a luxuriously dissonant passing moment on the penultimate chord. <laughs> 